the new Wything Scale, the durable iPad Mini, Amtrak goes Pathbook, iStop Motion for iPad Update, and Evernote 5 for iOS. It's the first week of November 2012, and this is iWake. I'm Tim Chatton, and this is what's going on in the Apple world today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of iWake. This is the second show I am doing this week, the first week of November. I am not sure if I'll be doing another one, but uh, I may. So uh, with that said, uh, let's get into the news of uh, today, of this week. Uh, first up is a new scale from Withings, or Withings, I'm not sure the pronunciation there. Anyways, they are the makers of those fantastic Wi-Fi scales that you just hop onto it and send your information over to your iPhone or iPad or whatever it is. And it's a really sleek solution, um, and it's a, it's a cool one for gadget people and also people that want to get uh, healthier, I guess, or maintain their already awesome health. So the new wireless scale adds uh, Bluetooth to the mix and is a lower price point. So it replaces the old scale from 2009, and uh, so Bluetooth is added uh, as well as Wi-Fi. So even if you're outside of a Wi-Fi zone, it's able to connect to your, your iPhone over Bluetooth instead. Uh, and uh, integrates with the iPhone app that helps you, uh, has reminders for you to weigh in, help you track your progress. The app itself has been updated with a lot of cool new features, and an iPad version is finally coming out. In the next uh, few weeks, uh, it'll be here, and as I mentioned, the price is now lower at $130 instead of the old $160 available at Apple stores and at Wything.com. Amazon, I believe, is getting those in stock as well. Uh, next up today, I just want to share uh, drop testing of tablets. So recently, you know, people have been drop testing these tablets, the iPad Mini, the iPad, and uh, this Nexus device, Nexus 7. And uh, Square Trade did, did a really good test of this, and they have to utilize the machine to drop tablets at the same time under the same conditions. And in the two tests they conducted, uh, the iPad Mini had the best uh, result of this drop. So according to this report, uh, the dro- devices were dropped on their corners and front faceplate. The iPad Mini fared out the best out of all the three from the corner drop, suffering only uh, minor aesthetic, aesthetic damage and no screen ca- cra- uh, cracks. Well, the edge of the Nexus 7 display showed some trauma, and the full-size iPad suffered major cracks from the point of impact. Even uh, uh, going beyond that, they did some dunk tests, water tests, and the iPad Mini even did okay there. Whereas the full-size iPad didn't like the water too much. The home button got sticky when that happened. Uh, but as I would say to all people, do not, do not uh, dunk your iPad Mini in water. Uh, you will not have the best of results as uh, I've experienced water-damaged iPads myself. And it's, it's not a fun thing. Uh, next of the day, I just want to mention that Amtrak, those in America... Uh, Amtrak is now uh, offering Passbook support. So version 1.3 of their application now offers Passbook support, and that lets you uh, just do everything through your iPhone, uh, digital tickets, and uh, you can live in the future now with uh, Amtrak, which is cool. Next up today, a fairly significant update to Motion for iPad. It's version 1.5. They've added support for the iPad Mini, so I'm not sure how they optimize it, but uh, they have gone out of their way to make it uh, extra special for the iPad Mini. Uh, they have blank frames. Users can easily insert a blank, uh, black or white frame into a clip by tapping and holding the capture button to open the menu options. There's more way to share in this new update. Uh, you can do uh, uh, Twitter sharing, Facebook, Cinea, Webio sharing as well. And they've updated their accessories page uh, for ways to... Uh, Better your use of iStop Motion for iPad. Uh, and the, as far as pricing, it's still the $10 price point. And they've updated the companion app iStop Motion Remote Camera. And it's uh, even more stable and better than ever. Uh, this is for iPad and iPad Mini. Next up today is Evernote 5. So a little while back, you heard about Evernote 5 for Mac. It's now in the beta form. Uh, now Evernote has shown off what Evernote 5 for iOS will look like. And it's very simple, very streamlined. Uh, It's all about speed according to Evernote. Whether you're creating a new browsing to a new one, everything needs to happen fast. So it also needs to be able to uh, 
basically put stuff that you use up in center. So if you're a tagger, tags must be up and ready to go. If you're a notebook guy, those need to be, need to be easy to access. So everything according to Evernote needs, should be a tap or two away. And that's what they've done with this latest version of Evernote. They've used that old iPod philosophy of let's make this one or two uh, clicks away for everything. And that's what they've done. And it looks really sleek and very excited to see this come out and be released. Next up in Apple News is they have the podcast app by Apple. So a while back, we had this podcast app at version 1. Now we're at version 1.1.2. It includes some significant changes or some minor changes that will make uh, many of you, uh, your lives better if you use this app. So uh, here we go. What is new in this app? We have tapping a podcast in top stations. Now reveal epi episodes you can play. So that top station feature is now better than ever. You can now easily turn on automatic downloads for all subscribed podcasts and settings. Very nice to there. And it issue addresses an issue where previously played or deleted episodes unexpectedly reappear as new. Resolves an issue where podcasts may unexpectedly play after a phone call or alarm. Uh, I've had this happen nearly every single time. So that uh, is a nice change that they've fixed. Includes additional stability and performance improvements. So there you go. This is uh, all welcome changes to the podcasting app by Apple. Next of the day, Twitter and photos. So evidently, according to Nick Bilton, you know, a New York Times writer, uh, he states that the coming months, Twitter plans to update its mobile apps to introduce filters for photos that will allow people to share altered images on Twitter and bypass Instagram. Uh, according to people who work at the company, uh, this is coming, but uh, they were not asked me names. So, uh, interesting idea, Twitter with filters. So I think the idea is cool with photos being a big part about Twitter. But the idea itself about just filters is the wrong idea. Instagram is great not because of its filters, but because of its easy sharing. So what Twitter needs to do, I think here, is create a better sharing app. So a Twitter app optimized for sharing photos, perhaps a photo-only Twitter app where that's all you see. It's a Twitter for photos. That's what they need to do. That is what is key about Instagram. I don't care about photo uh, filters. Most people don't. It's about the easy sharing, and that's where they need to focus on. Uh, John Gruber had the same idea, and it, that's it. You know, filters are nice, but it's all about easy sharing, and that's not going to happen with you just adding filters. So that's my two cents there. Last of the day is just the simple news that the Lightning to Micro USB adapters are now available in the United States uh, for us here with a one to three day shift time sold at $19. So if you want to convert your Lightning to a uh, micro USB, that is the adapter you will want, and it's now available for us in the United States. So that is the show for today. That may be the last show for this week. I am not sure. Uh, but anyways, thank you for tuning in to today's show. Uh, as uh, I said uh, before, I am working on an Iowa Again episode that I got recorded last week. Uh, so that will be out in the feed uh, sometime uh, next day or two, perhaps, uh, coming out soon. So my apologies there. It's been um, a little bit hectic uh, where I'm at. So uh, with all that said, thank you for tuning in. The show notes are available at iawakepodcast.com. Uh, I do YouTube videos, a lot of them, over 400 of them are up at youtube.com slash T-C-H-A-T-E-N. And you could be my 100th subscriber. I'm getting very close to that. So uh, help me reach 100 at youtube.com slash T-C-H-A-T-E-N. And finally, uh, I do this thing called iWake again, as I just said. iWakePodcast.com slash again for more information on that. Thank you for tuning in. I will talk to everyone again when I get a chance. Aloha. Aloha.